Hello, and welcome to a very impromptu episode of Conversations. I just woke up this morning and decided today I am going to do a podcast episode that I hadn't planned on, which if you've been following me for a while, you know I am very sporadic and have issues with my attention span. So having said that, today's episode is going to be about me quitting alcohol. Why? Well, that's funny. I feel like when I think about all the reasons I want to quit or have quit, I come up with a lot, but it's almost in a defensive type of way, which leads me to believe, yes, I definitely had, have a problem. So that's my first point. I am addicted to alcohol. I have been in a relationship with alcohol for decades. I never really faced the issue of having a problem because it's been around me my whole life. So that led me to believe that that is just something that the path that I was supposed to live in my life. Now, for anybody that's listening, if you are a sober person that has recovered from alcohol abuse, and you say, oh my gosh, she's only quit for a month. She has no idea. That, please listen. <laughs> please hear me out. I have quit through my pregnancies. I have quit through random diets that I've done, like Whole30, and and I've always gone back to it. Why? Because I like how it makes me feel. I feel like it's fun. It helps me relax sometimes. I've never been the type of alcohol drinker where it puts me into a depression or makes me angry or hostile. It just has always made me feel comfortable, relaxed, uh, excited. I wouldn't say it necessarily enhanced my personality because I've always been very extroverted and I'm not afraid to go up and talk to people. So it's that's never been a concern, but it's just always been something that I've done and it's made me feel good. So why quit, right? Well, for whatever reason, September 24th, I woke up and I just decided I don't think I want to drink anymore. I didn't wake up with a hangover. I had gone out the night before with my husband and to celebrate his birthday. And I had probably one of the best drinks I've ever had in my life. So when I go out to eat with my husband or we do anything and we go to a place that serves alcohol, I immediately wanted to see the menu and look at it and, oh, what kind of fun drinks? What do they have? What can I drink? Which probably wouldn't be an issue if I could stop at that one drink. That is the problem. I want more and more and more. I have been a smoker. I quit smoking back before I turned 40 years old. I'm 52 now. But I just have that kind of personality where one is never enough. I need, you know, the potato chip kind of theory. So after many years, and my husband doesn't drink. I mean, he'll have a beer once a month So another reason why it's like, oh my God, why is he even with me when he just watches me get drunk all the time? And I kind of just came to the realization, like, what is my goal? What am I striving for? Because we would have so many nights where we would watch Dateline or watch whatever on TV. And he would say, what's the last thing you remember from watching last night? Now that might seem funny, But looking back, that is so sad because it became his norm to fill me in on what I didn't remember after I drank too much. I would drink beer from my early ages all the way until probably, I don't know, 35. And then I decided I'm going to switch to wine. Because that is, quote, more sophisticated. Okay, no, it's not. It's lazy because it has so much more alcohol in it and it would get me drunk faster. So I wouldn't have to open six to eight cans of beer. I could just have two glasses of wine and feel 
pretty good. Feel just as drunk as if I drank all those beers and not as full. I just, I could justify it in any way possible. And again, that's how you know you have a problem when you justify your behavior. So then it was, hmm, not two glasses of wine. Let's have three. And that's what brings me to the, what is my goal? I, I clearly am passing out every night, so I'm not getting good quality sleep. I consider myself a functioning alcoholic because I could go to work and do my job and then come home and while I'm making dinner, you know, think about, oh, I can't wait to go down to the basement, start watching TV and have my two to three glasses of wine. We would go to family functions and I would drink all night and then come home drunk and drink more. Again, what? is my goal. So September 23rd, I wake up and I just say, you know what, I'm done. I don't I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know why I'm doing it. It never feels good the next day. I don't want to go to my job and feel like garbage anymore. I just don't want to do it anymore. So I there was no catastrophic thing that happened. I didn't have an issue the night before. I don't know what happened. So we have been on vacation, and I honestly didn't think about it. I I thought about it when we got on the plane, because I would always have like a Bloody Mary or some kind of drink on the plane. And then after that, it just wasn't a thing. The people on the plane were drinking, and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember doing that. I know it hasn't been that long. It sounds so silly. It's hard to explain my mindset and where I'm at right now, but I'm happy about it. After being on vacation for a week and not drinking, I thought, wow, if I can go on vacation and not drink and not miss it, I'm doing pretty good. And then I came to a family event and my family likes to drink and I love drinking with my family. That is just what we do, did, whatever. And I had a good time. I didn't drink. I just had water and I tried a seltzer water drink that I'd never had before. And I had some iced tea. I, I got to remember everything that happened. I don't know. For whatever reason, right now is just the time for me. And when they have like the AA things where they say one day at a time, I get it. I get it now. Because I think to myself, maybe some magical day down the road, I'll be able to just have a beer at dinner and that'll be it. I won't need to go out afterwards and buy more beer or buy wine or whatever. Maybe that is a dream. But for now, I am content just waking up and feeling good. My sleep quality is It's trying to figure itself out. I'm taking melatonin, hoping that that will actually balance eventually because I want the good night's sleep. So why have I quit? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, A, I was addicted. B, money. It's expensive to drink as much as I was drinking. And I don't work full time. And my husband helps a lot with our bills. So is it fair to him to have to spend money for my habit? He never has complained about that. He's a saint, I tell you, for living with me. Anyway, money. Okay. Probably one of the biggest reasons, vanity. I have put on so much weight from drinking and eating garbage while I drank, you know, whether it's trail mix or just whatever. I've done so much to try and eat better trying to be more vegetarian slash vegan, eating better. And then at night, I just destroy it by having all these drinks and eating crap. So another reason, weight gain. My skin looked dry just from being dehydrated from the, all the alcohol. And so I I want to take better care of my skin. I want to look younger or just not look older So that's another reason. My hair is just dry. I attributed that to hormones, which it could be. Who knows? I don't know. I'm trying to do what I can to help the process. So that's another thing. Um, Yeah, vanity. 
I don't want to look old. I don't want to look fat. I don't want to look out of shape. I want to look good and I want to feel good. Hangovers, awful. Having a headache every day after drinking too much wine, feeling like I'm going to barf, um, compensating, like waking up so I'd take Excedrin for having the headache and having Excedrin on an empty stomach because my stomach would be upset. So I would take Excedrin with Pepto Bismol. Okay, why would that not be a red flag or 10 red flags for me? I don't know. That's awful. Like, what am I doing to my body? Oh, sleep. I said sleep. I want to sleep better. My dad passed away in 2020 with cancer. Uh, That was should have been a wake up call. That was three years ago. You know, uh, just health, wanting to get older and feel better and Uh, reduce the odds of me having any type of cancer. Again, this is me. I am not preaching to anybody. If you want to turn this off because you are afraid that that's what I'm going to do, no. I am to the point where if everyone around me wants to get drunk, let them. Have fun with it. Do your thing. I am not going to preach. I am not going to tell people what they need to do with their bodies or their lives. For me, I want to stop I was ready to stop, and that's where I'm at. My brain health, I've been concerned about that. I have never had a good memory as far as remembering people's names, but I've been drinking almost my entire life, so I really feel like hopefully I am changing this pattern, and hopefully my brain will start to recover in the best way possible, and I can start focusing on my brain health, taking supplements and doing puzzles and doing things that are better for my brain. Another thing that I hated when I was drinking is if I would go to something and people would be taking pictures, which a lot of times you go to weddings, you go to the bar, you go out with friends, you go to family functions and people are taking pictures. People want to, you know, look back on good times and I would dread dread. Like I didn't remember a lot of it. So it's like, oh my God, what am I going to look like in the pictures? What was I doing? Are there pictures of me drunk? Or having to look at the pictures just so that I could remember what actually happened. I have lived this pattern of life for so many years. It has become my normal and I want to create a new normal. I want to start a new chapter. So That's where I'm at in my life right now. Again, I'm taking it day by day. I do not plan on uh, focusing on sobriety or making that. Like, I'm not going to shove it down people's throats. It's just really where I'm at right now in my life. I have one grandchild and two on the way in the next two months. And I want to embrace that and remember every moment of it and not have my grandkids look back on grandma, Nana, and think, oh, wow, you know, my Nana, she's a drinker. She drinks all the time. I just, for me, that's just, it's not what I want. I want to remember everything. I want to be able to cherish all those memories. I want uh, my husband to be proud of me. I want my kids to be proud of me. I want them to see me as a role model. So even if they have seen me as a role model for other reasons, I want them to say, you know what, my mom is a strong person and she, my wife is a strong person, my sibling is a strong person, she stuck to it. So I hope that I can, I'm praying on it that I can, I'm really just going to try and make myself proud too. So yeah, that's where I'm at with my life. I would like to do at least one episode about sobriety or just um, talk to people that have gone through it and how their life improved from it. Because I think, if anything, that would be great to have some inspiration. I want to be one of those people that someone can look up to and say, wow, I remember she was a huge drinker. And look at her. She's lost weight. She's taking care of herself. She looks great. She's concerned about her longevity, her whatever. I would love to have people look at me that way. 
and see that I, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Trust me. I watched um, today, this morning, the YouTube video from Andrew Huberman, who he's fascinating. If you've never, you had to have heard of him, but if you haven't, he's fascinating. And he had a special all about alcohol and what it does to your body. And I had heard that it was really good, but I hadn't had the time because it's like two hours. And so I finally watched it this morning while I did stuff around the house. It has had five million views. That that's a lot of views. So I'm thinking either somebody is rewatching it again and again, or they're telling their friends. Five million people have watched it. Clearly, there's a lot of people out there that are thinking like me or that are trying like me. I don't know. I hope that if there's people that struggle with it and have a problem with it or are in an abusive relationship with somebody that has an issue with it, you know, what an eye opener to know that there's that many people that are interested in the topic. But again, that is not where my podcast is headed. I may have an episode or two about it in the, in the future, but I'm still going to continue with talking about self-development and spirituality because that is where my heart lies. I love all of it. The new age, mystical, all that stuff. I love it. So that is where I'm going to continue to go with this for, for now, you know, until my brain switches to something else. I just felt like maybe I would get this out there so people know where I'm at in my life. If you'd like to reach out to me, uh, and give me any kind of support, I would appreciate it. It's conversations at gmail.com. And if you'd like to pray, you could pray for me that I can stay on the path that I'm supposed to be on. And if you have any suggestions or if you'd like to be a guest, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. I'm trying to build a soul tribe here, so I would love to hear from people that are possibly on the same path, are considering this path, are enjoying the topics that I've been covering and have ideas or would like to be a guest and talk about these things. Reach out. I'd love to hear from you. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.